This episode of Tech in 20 SV is brought to you by SwebApps.com, mobile app developers for your business. Find them online at SwebApps.com. We're also brought to you by C4 Workspace, community, collaboration, cooperation, and co-working. You can find them at C4Workspace.com. 210 TV, San Antonio's first internet television network. Find them online at 210TV.com. Hey there everybody, welcome to episode 23 of Tech in 20 SV. On a show like this, it is the digital convergence of all things media, so we're going to talk about things like comics. Games. Comics. Video games. Comics. Video games. Comics. Video games. <laughs> Do you get the idea, I, yeah. folks? <laughs> we're going to talk about comics and video games on this show. And you know why? Because there's so much good stuff that came out. Yeah. We thought we're just going to dedicate it to the stuff that we love. Yeah, definitely. And I will tell you this right now, a huge, huge thank you. We put a request out uh, a couple of weeks ago for some geek shirts. and. Lay Lowry um, actually donated the uh, Han shop first. Wait, Lay Lowry from from where? He's from at here uh, at, uh, at, Lay, at at Lay Lowry on Twitter. Sweet, and nice so shirt. he donated the Han go. shop first. And for those of you Star Wars geeks out there, it's a huge debate: who shot first, Greedo or Han? The shirt solved the problem. Han shot first. Han did shoot first, by the way, yeah. because he was t making that preemptive strike because Guido was about to knock him out. So yeah. Han was a smart one here. Guido, rest in peace, buddy. Yeah, definitely. So um, with that being said, we're going to jump right in and talk about a very hot topic. And for those of you gaming geeks out there, um, specifically PC gaming geeks, you probably <laughs> have heard about a small game called StarCraft from Blizzard, Tiny Game. Tiny a few people play it online, Just and they game. actually released the sequel last night. Well, okay, the crazy thing about this is that StarCraft came out 12 years ago. Yeah. My oldest son was eight years old when it came out. He was this little kid with his feet dangling off the chair, I remember on the PC playing, and he really got our family involved in this because of the storyline and the characters mm -hmm. and what was going on. And then of course it ends, you beat the game and that's it. Of course at the same time, right after that, World of War, or Warcraft came right. out, not World of Warcraft, Warcraft came out, and that was very popular, and then Blizzard put all of their energy into the World of Warcraft, mm -hmm. and really just kind of milked that sucker <laughs> until he couldn't milk it anymore. And as a matter of fact, um, a lot of True gamers have dropped World of Warcraft because they feel like it's been dumbed down for the general yeah. masses, and so they've been kind of uh, chomping at the bit to get to another kind of level game. And StarCraft II has been something that people have been talking about for years. Blizzard's been promising it and promising it, yeah. and folks, they finally delivered. A Blizzard has a lot of um, intellectual property titles that are just phenomenal. We look at games like Diablo, we look at games like StarCraft, we look at games like World of Warcraft, or the Warcraft series in general. Um, they also had a game that was actually a console game that they're actually looking at reviving called Lost Vikings as well. Um, interestingly enough, they put a lot of time and effort into Warcraft, obviously. We have an MMORPG out that is massively popular, um, but StarCraft II has been something that a lot of people have been asking for. The interesting thing about after, uh, StarCraft One is that after you played the missions, you actually played the three races. After you fulfilled that, um, the replayability actually came in the online play. Mm -hmm. um, you would actually jump onto Battle.net and be able to play anybody from around the world. I specifically remember playing in the college dorm. We'd have a LAN set up and we would basically, from our own rooms, all kind of play each other. Um, we would do that over and over again into the night, a lot of fun, but you know, even now, as much as StarCraft is still hugely popular, people were definitely ready for a sequel, and as much as it's been promised and taken off the table, mm -hmm. promised and taken off the table, we finally had our chance to lay our hands on it last night, and Jennifer, what do you think? Well, uh, my two sons are completely different gamers. My oldest son is a guy who just dives in and gets killed many, many times and figures it out as he goes along, and he's all like the MDK thing, murder, death, kill. <laughs> um, my youngest son is more strategic about it, and he will actually learn where all the hidden things are and how to you know unlock everything right, right, right. so he's more strategic so I'm watching them both kind of play their way of playing the game and either way it totally works it really doesn't matter the kind of gamer that you are um, it's gonna be something that works for you the visual uh, graphics are really dynamic it's it's amazing and of course there's a lot of excitement around it so I'm kind of excited about this whole franchise really re being revitalized and seeing it kind of do what Warcraft did hopefully you know mushrooming up to something that can be, you know, have a long-term impact. I think the storyline for StarCraft actually lends itself to an amazing MMORPG. If you think about planetary expeditions, you're looking at multiple planets, a lot of, you know, space battles. You know, World of Warcraft actually takes place on a singular planet, which, again, still lends itself to MMORPG, but if you look at the vastness 
um, of what could have possibly happened with a StarCraft MMORPG, you're looking at uh, some pretty amazing possibilities with the um, expansiveness of the world. Uh, what I will say about StarCraft is that more so than Warcraft, I thought that StarCraft storyline was a lot more solid because the characters literally went from segment to segment and the sequel, um, actually not the sequel, the um, expansion packs actually carried those characters in. So I feel like they've developed those characters a lot more. Um, maybe it's because I'm more of a sci-fi person than I am a fantasy type person. I, I actually related with the StarCraft storyline a lot more, really enjoyed it. So the sequel is, um, it's kind of like a breath of fresh air on something that you really love, kind of like blowing dust off something. It's like wow, you, you kind of, you basically find it again, mm -hmm. um, and, and I'm really looking forward to getting my hands on it for a longer period of time and actually playing it, because as a StarCraft traditional player, I had a great time with it, so StarCraft 2 is definitely going to lend itself to a lot of fun. Well, the cool thing is that they picked up the storyline from uh, Brood Wars, mm -hmm. you know, right where it left off, so if you were someone who, like Lewis and, and, the, and my kids, who were hardcore gamers with StarCraft, it's like you didn't miss a beat. The story yeah. picks right up. It's not like as if, you know, it's 20 years later or 100 years later, and you're like, wait a minute, what happened in that gap? So I really like that, and I think it's going to be a lot, so let us hear from you. Yeah, yeah. What do you think? Are you one of those hardcore gamers? Are you someone who's still on the fence about it? Um, I know that my sons did the midnight release, and they walked away with a t-shirt, which I wish I had brought, <laughs> Um, but, but they won't let me touch it. They're like, no, Mom, this is mine. They walked away with a T-shirt and a cool poster. And so I think those are neat little giveaways. Yeah, the game itself lends itself to competition as well. A lot of people just outside of the LAN community uh, actually play competitive-wise, um, both uh, Warcraft and StarCraft. Uh, what's really interesting is that, I believe it was a week ago, if you check out our Tekken 20 uh, Facebook page, there's a video on there um, that I actually picked up from Ars Technica. They reported on a guy who is basically documenting his experiences as a competitive StarCraft player. Now, we're talking about the original StarCraft player. And he basically said that in order to be considered even competitive, you had to be able to do 200 to 300 actions a minute. Now, I love StarCraft. <laughs> I'm lucky if I get 30 to 40 actions in a minute. Um, watching this guy play is amazing. The video is basically just him clicking, 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 clicking on the keyboard and the mouse. It's like he's memorized the book of all the shortcuts. It is phenomenal. Um, we're definitely going to, if you haven't checked it out, you can check it out on our Facebook page. It's absolutely amazing. I encourage you to watch the whole thing because, quite frankly, I don't think I would even have the time to dedicate to memorizing two to three hundred clicks, you know, and, and process that. I have to wonder, does this guy have a job? Is he in mom's <laughs> basement? I mean, that, that's some serious dedication. Yeah. Now, is he getting paid maybe by a sponsor to do this? He do might. Know? I, I don't that's recall a lot of him work. saying he was being paid by a sponsor, but I do recall him saying that he does win a lot. So maybe the winnings are kind of providing him some some uh, I guess some cushion in terms of you know financial stability, mm -hmm. but you know two to three hundred clicks is a lot, folks. I mean literally it is. Uh, I mean two to three hundred clicks a minute. Come on, that's a lot. That's that's a talk lot. about multitasking. Well, the cool thing about this is that um, you remember I don't know if folks remember, but you know during in the gaming uh, competitive gaming uh, for a long time there was you know the World of Warcraft. They mm -hmm. would they would go around to places like the World Series of Video Games in different competitions, and you could go and enter with your three man team and go and you know compete against some of those rising stars. Um, I'm hoping that we see that with StarCraft. Can you imagine having competitive gaming all around the world yeah. with StarCraft? I mean, ah, it's going to be exciting. Definitely, definitely a whole lot something to look forward to. So again, Jennifer said, if you have any experience with StarCraft 2, let us know. Uh, maybe you have some videos or something you figured out, or maybe you can do two, 300 clicks a minute <laughs> if you can. Um, we'd love to see the video, and definitely send that to us at GetSocial at Tekken20.com. That's right, we want to prove it. Yeah. We, we're going to have to see it. <laughs> definitely. So you also talked to me about a video game prior to the filming of this uh, show that actually piqued my interest. It was about superheroes. <gasps> oh my gosh. Guys, DC Universe is coming in November. Mark your calendars, get ready, sign up for the pre-release, go stand in line, it's going to be amazing. You're able to develop your own superheroes. Now, I know you may think, well, I've kind of seen that before, Jennifer, not really impressed by that. It's a whole other level. Let me tell you, if you want to have kind of like Superman's abilities, you could be fast, you could have Batman's abilities, and so you can kind of borrow from their abilities to build your own superhero or villain. Could be a villain. If you want to be like the Joker, you can decide to be like the Joker. As a matter of fact, there is a, a few video clips on YouTube of a, a guy who is uh, basing his villain 
off of the Joker, so he's kind of got this crazy clown thing going, but his ability is all mental, so he will like uh, touch his head and blast you with a thing of mental power, and that's how he in incapacitates his enemies. It's really interesting because a few years ago there was actually a game called City of Heroes that was released and you actually have the ability to create um, superheroes and you can actually in an expansion pack also create villains. Um, I'm not quite sure if this is dynamic enough to be different from that title. I think the fact that the, the, um, the, the, the publishing house that's attached to it probably lends itself to a lot of marketability because, I mean, come on, comic fans, if you, if you love comics and you love these superheroes, you know what you're getting into, and the right. graphics look beautiful. It is definitely a step above what we saw in the past, the City of Heroes, but, again, is this something that the that people would really play for a long period of time because if it is an open world platform and you aren't able to play, um, again, are there missions? Is it just open world exploration, interaction? Is it gonna be a lot like um, Second Life but with heroes and villains and superpowers? We just kind of go head to head but with no real missions. I'm curious to know what's going to be the longevity of the gameplay. That's interesting because I was watching that video, the videos on YouTube, and they did have the character. The guy was just kind of walking around saying, this is how you do this, this is how you mm -hmm. do it. So it wasn't like necessarily a lot of gameplay. He did in, encounter another player in, in World, and so they did start battling a little sure. bit. And so then he was able to kind of talk about that. But I didn't really capture the fact whether it was mission-based or not. Mm -hmm. So I think maybe yeah, there's probably more videos out there, but it'll be interesting. I don't know. I'm a big superhero buff. I love yeah, that stuff. Yeah. I would totally base my character off of Batman and go for it. So when that game comes out, you're probably going to see me in world over there. Yeah, what's really interesting too is that we've seen a lot of games where they have PvP servers, which is player versus player servers. Um, I used to be a real big player of Ultima Online way back when. Uh, they actually had what they called shards at the time where you could play the game and you could not attack another player, or there was another shard where you could still play the same mission, same game, but it was you could be attacked by players. It was a PvP server. So I'm thinking that this superhero villain is going to be a PvP server. I, uh, but I'm really curious about the mission base because quite frankly, if it's just going to be another second life only with superheroes where we can kind of play each other, that doesn't really draw me in as much as if it was mission based. So um, I believe City of Heroes was mission based and you did actually have things that you had to do not only by yourself but also group up, almost like creating your own Avengers or creating your own you know, X-Men superpower team. Uh, again, I'm, I know this is still early on. Um, the game comes out in November. Right. Uh, Good, you know, in time for Christmas, folks. Yeah, and especially with Comic-Con having just wrapped up, people are hyped about superheroes, mm -hmm. and that's what everybody's talking about, especially with movies and comics and all that good stuff, should be interesting. Mm, I, I agree. I, I can't wait. I don't know. I'm a big geek about stuff like that. I just think it's a lot of fun. Um, you know, if you're also a, a, a geek like that, let us hear from you. <laughs> you know, one of the interesting things about uh, Comic-Con, and it was, I actually had a conversation um, with uh, Todd O'Neill here at C4 Workspace, and I know we covered this topic as well, is the fact that, you know, Comic-Con was actually comics, but it was really leaning heavy on the film aspect. Mm -hmm. Now, some of the movie panels actually were really, really interesting. Um, one of the interesting things about the movie panels also is that they also had television series there, which I thought was really interesting. Mm, well, I mean, there's Sci-Fi Channel. I could, I could yeah, get that. Yeah, exactly. But, I mean, are we talking like Law and Order? No, 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 no. We're talking more sci-fi <laughs> series. Okay. I mean, uh, in the past... I had, think that's allowed. Yeah, in the past they've had Buffy the Vampire. Um, they had uh, panels. Um, they had Firefly panels, which I'm a huge fan of. And I think this year one of the big sci-fi television panels they had was Stargate Universe. Now, I don't know if you watch Stargate or have been a big fan of Stargate. I'm a big fan of the movie and a pseudo fan of the series. Some are real hit and miss. Um, but I'm just kind of curious from our audience. You know, we, we talked a little bit about it last week, and we really want to hear what your thoughts are on the entire Comic Con situation. I mean, everything happened, it's all done. You heard about some really great things, both from the movie and the comic side. But we'd love to hear from you. If you attended Comic Con, send us some videos, send us some photos. Um, I actually was really interested in seeing what some of the cosplayers were dressed as. Um, last week we filmed at uh, Oopal's Apparel mm -hmm. and uh, talked, talked a little bit about cosplay. But I know at Comic Con they went well above and beyond. <laughs> I mean, down to full blown makeup. I saw some Klingons there, <laughs> I saw some full blown superheroes, mm -hmm. not just in spandex, but had all the makeup and, and the, the headgear and everything on. So, I mean, if you attended, we'd love to see those photos. Definitely send them to us at Get Social at Tekken 20 because the Comic Con is something that I think you and I would definitely love to attend. It's like the central for geeks. I don't know if I, I heard people who like spent six hours in makeup to attend this. I, I don't even want to spend that kind of okay, time. Okay, we're not going in cosplay gear. Well, and if we did, it wouldn't be a six-hour kind of deal. It'd be something that you just kind of throw on and maybe a little, you know, makeup. But 
I don't know, you guys, you're dedicated, you know, thumbs up to you, my hat's off to yeah. you as well. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So, um, Jennifer, any tech topics that have interested you this week that have piqued your interest or uh, kind of uh, got your concern? 